So now we're going to look and see how to process form values in Go, the Go programming language. How do you build a form and have somebody submit the form and then grab the data and work with it in your program? Important. And to know that, I call this passing data. So that's like about as general as a term, <laughs> as confusing and as broad as you could probably get in programming. Because you pass data everywhere in programming. But this is passing data from the client to the server. Okay, so how do we pass data to the client to the server? And you can find this code if you look online by going to GitHub goes to 11. GitHub goes to 11. And go into the Golang web dev repo. So that's my username. And this is the repo. Just for all of those people who are out there in Tangiers and Nigeria and everywhere in the world. And so here we're in the Golang web dev 27 passing data folder. And uh, we're going to learn about passing values from form submission. So we can pass values from the client to the server through the URL or through the body of the request. When you submit a form, you can either use method post or git, right? You could either use uh, git or post as the method. And uh, I should probably make that all capital. The post method sends the, the form submission through the body of the request. I'm going to fix that for a second. Read me. Get. There we go. So the post method sends the form submission through the body of the request. The get method, I have no idea why, I, I, there must be some reason, of, for form submission sends the form submission values through the URL. I remember this like this. Post goes through the body. Get goes through the URL. Get's got three letters. Post has got four letters, right? Get and URL each have three letters. Post and body each have four letters. Get it? My little mnemonic device. So when you build a form in HTML, and we'll just go up here to our class sort of catch-all place, 46, spring 17, and we'll do 41. HTML form, and we'll just create an HTML page, uh, index, and, uh, and then when I create a form, it asks me for the action. And the action is where do I want it to be submitted. So I could say, you know, sign up process if I wanted, or sign up process. And so that would be the route where this would submit. If action wasn't in there, it submits to whatever page it's running on. That's just how HTML works by default. But then the other attribute that I could put in there is method. And those methods could be post or get. You see that? And so post is going to send the data which way? Through the body. Right? Body's got four letters. Post has got four letters. Get is going to send the data which way? Through the URL. Okay, So there's, there's our form, and that's just the basic stuff. And so we have some examples here. Right? Let me just finish showing this. Uh, yeah, so you can always, uh, here's how you, the, when it goes through the URL, and you can always append values to the URL. So if you use git, it's going to put all the values in the URL, and it's going to put anything after the question mark is the query string, the area where values are stored. So here's the protocol, HTTPS. This would be like a subdomain video. Here's the domain, google.co or google.com or google.co.uk. This would be the port. 80 is the default. And then we have the path, which could be forward slash, forward slash, forward slash, something or another. right? And we saw earlier path was kicking out forward slash dog or whatever not. And then we have the question mark. Anything after the question mark just are going to be key value pairs. They're going to be variables. So doc ID is equal to a negative... 72, and then an ampersand tells me there's a new one, HL is equal to English or EN, and then a hash is a fragment. So that's the hash right there. So that's a, that's a URL. And the values are stored in an uh, identifier equal value fashion. You can have multiple identifier equal values by separating them with an ampersand. To retrieve the values when they come to the server, there are multiple ways to retrieve values, but we're going to stick with uh, request the form value. 
And so here's the signature from the standard library. And uh, a request has this method attached to it, because that's the receiver. And it takes a key, and it returns a string. It takes a key, which is a string, and it returns a string. So form value returns the first value of the named component of the query. Post and put body parameters take precedence over URL query string values. So if we have a value in the URL called doc ID, and there's also a value that's been sent through the body called doc ID, right? It's going to give precedence. Post and put body parameters take precedence over URL. So it'll give precedence to what's in the body. Form value calls parse multipart form and parse form if necessary and ignores any errors returned by these functions. If key is not present, form value returns the empty string. So if the key is not there, right, it gives you back an empty string. To access multiple values of the same key, call parse form and then inspect request form directly. So if you have multiple values with the same key, you can get to all those values, but you just have to do it with uh, parse form and request form. So that's just you know some nuances to it, but form value is what we're going for. Form value is what we're going for. Let's try and do a funny voice just to wake everybody up. So let's see it in action, and then we'll play with it. And so in action, here, take a look at this program. Request form value Q, and we're assigning that to variable V. And, uh, and then we're saying, do my search. And we're writing that back with fumped f print, so and we're writing it to the response writer, and we're just concatenating do my search with the value v there, and q is going to come from the URL because we'll we could go to a URL like this, localhost 8080 forward slash, and then add a question mark, and then the key value pair, q equal dog, right? So I'm going to run this. Control C, PWD, and I'm in 25. I need to go to 27. And that should have worked. 027, passing data. Where am I? Oh, I need to go up one more. And, uh, and then 01. And I'm just going to drag this over so I can see it all. And go run main.go. So localhost 8080, do my search nothing, but when I add that question mark, all right, this is what I had before, do my search, but if I add that question mark and Q is equal to something, or another, this is a query string parameter and value, value, right? And uh, query string value, it's the query string, and we've got uh, identifier and a value uh, uh, stored in that identifier, so a variable. So that's a query string. And we're saying Q is equal to something or another, and our program catches that Q and then sends it back right to the response. So when I make my request, my request is saying, hey, give me this URL. And that comes in. And that comes into this route here, right? Because that catches everything except for this if that explicitly matches. And when that comes in, it says, hey, is form value, is there a Q? And it looks in the body and it looks in the URL. And if there's a Q there, it assigns it to V, the value to V, and then we concatenate it. Does that make sense? Form value. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to uh, code this up. So code up this page and just try it out yourself. 